Hey guys, Xperder here, and today I'm talking about RPGs. Now, RPGs are some of my favourite games of all time, simply because they let you take the place of another character, whether that character has a name already, or whether that character is a custom created character, and then you can just go out there into the world, experience a grand adventure, and even in some RPGs, dictate how the entire story or how the ending goes, depending on your honest reactions to certain events during the game which is amazing. And some of my favourite games in this genre are games like Oblivion, Skyrim, Mass Effect, and the list keeps going on. But you may be thinking, what is making me talk about RPGs today? Well, crazily, out of nowhere, I'm actually talking about RPGs mainly because of a recent episode of Game Grumps that I saw. So, well, thank you Danny and Aaron for giving me inspiration for this. It means a lot. Specifically, it was for Game Grumps playing through The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild with episode 34 titled Big Bird. And in this episode, Aaron goes on to talk about how he enjoys the experience of finding things in the world himself without a cutscene or without the game showing or necessarily introducing him to what he has to do. He likes the whole idea of being able to explore the world, take things at his own pace and doing things his way without having the game necessarily play a cutscene that explains everything and breaks immersion and suddenly introduces you to said area that you already know about because you've already seen it and even experienced it as a player. Specifically in this moment in time, it was when Aaron and Danny, whilst playing the game, managed to get up to Rito Village, and as soon as they reached Rito Village, they heard a massive CAW in the background, and it was from the big floating bird just above them. Now, if this is your first time going to Rito, then sure, this will be a pretty awesome moment. The cutscene will play out, you see the village, you see the big bird looming up ahead, and it makes you feel, wow, this is pretty awesome. However, this did not work for Aaron, because in the episodes leading up to this one, you could see the big bird in the distance, and Aaron was liking the whole idea of that that was the signal that something's happening nearby. So he's heading towards that in order to find out what the heck's happening, and because he knows, in the game's plot, if he goes there to help Big Bird, Big Bird will become a friend, which we all want in our lives, because everyone wants Big Bird to be a friend. And I'm mostly talking about Sesame Street Big Bird. He's he's huggable. Just just amazing. But of course, all this time leading up to this event, he goes there, he sees Big Bird, he ends up at Rito Village, and Caw! the cutscene plays out, and all of a sudden the immersion is broken and Aaron gets pissed because the cutscene does nothing for him. Yes, the cutscene establishes the size and scape of a village in comparison to Big Bird. But it does nothing to enlighten Aaron about anything that's new. It just shows Aaron that yes, this is the village, this is Big Bird, it's all tied together, go do your thing. When in all honesty, upon reaching the village, Aaron could have just climbed up the tree that has all these houses on, found out that yes, the birds can interact with the Big Bird and I need to work with them in order to get up there and save the day, and do that all in the game being immersed without the need of any cutscenes or any immersion breaking whatsoever. So the question here is, why would you need a cutscene like this? Seems a bit of a waste. Thus leading me to talk about immersion. Now for those who don't understand what immersion is all about, let me explain. Immersion means the deep mental involvement of something. So for example, if you're listening to this video right now and I'm having a conversation with you over said video and you're being embraced by and you're focusing on it, you're being immersed by what the video is bringing to you. So if I was to suddenly, I don't know, fade to black, you see that moment there? That's immersion breaking. All of a sudden you're left thinking, wait, what? What did that do? And that's what I'm talking about. Immersion breaking can be devastating if the wrong person is embracing it. So let's take this situation from this episode of Game Grumps in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and compare it to a similar situation that you could have in a game such as Skyrim. So let's recap. The guys get over to Rito Village. After seeing Big Bird this whole time, they head on over to the village, car cutscene happens, immersion is immediately broken, and instead of leaving with the feeling that, wow, look at how amazing this shot looks and how beautiful everything is, Aaron's left with the idea of thinking, oh come on, why do you have to basically get the controls out of my hands and show me and introduce me to something that I already know? 
That sounds bad. And now let's take a similar situation that could happen with that in, let's say, Skyrim. And let's say in Skyrim you approach one of the many different settlements in the game, and as you approach said settlement, nothing happens. Because the game itself doesn't really have anything along the lines of cutscenes, apart from debatable any of those scenes where something happens and your character genuinely can't move until it gives you back the controls and now you're probably fighting something or you're just able to move once again. But as you're walking around this settlement, you may be talking to some NPCs, learning about the land, learning about some new rumours or some new quest lines that are going on elsewhere, all of a sudden you can hear Dragon flying overhead, approaching the settlement, burning everything to the ground, guards readying their bows and their swords, ready to fight this bad boy, and now, suddenly, shit gets real. You're completely immersed in this moment, and the game has suddenly changed. And now, as a player, you can decide on three different actions, and these actions are as followed. You can straight up assist the guards and start battling the dragon and have an epic dragon fight inside of this settlement. The second thing, you can use stealth to either give you an advantage upon attacking the dragon itself or potentially getting out of the situation just so you can move on with your adventures. And the third one, which happens every now and again, run the hell away because you're clearly not ready to fight said dragon. But all of these situations and this moment in itself is fully immersed and realized because can you imagine that situation happening if you're just talking to an npc then all of a sudden a letterbox comes down onto screen the camera is taken away from you it pans away to show the dragon flying towards the city and you maybe hear a guard in the background saying dragon and then the fight begins how does that make that entire situation better to some people, they may just love it. They may love the idea that all of a sudden, oh god, it's a dragon attack, let's go. But for other people that enjoy the true player immersive experience, it completely breaks them apart. The controls are suddenly released from them, they have to watch a cutscene play out, and by the time they get the controls back, they're just in this mood of, oh come on, I know there's a dragon coming, but I could have probably seen them or heard them coming if there wasn't a bloody cutscene. And this is the same thing happening in Breath of the Wilds. Does the entire scene change if all that happened when you reached Rito Village for the first time was that the ground shook and all you heard was the CAW and the echoes ringing through Rito Village? I don't think anything would have changed. The game would have stayed pretty much the same. The pace would have stayed up. Link would have reacted and would have gone, huh? 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 And then you would just move on as a player carrying on and you would be thinking wow this is size and scape and that's the whole point of immersion so with that said how would you fix this situation in breath of the wilds well it's like i said just remove that scene entirely leave it all up to the player to experience that moment of the ground shaking and seeing how powerful this big bird really is and how intimidating it is not just for you as a player, but for the actual NPCs living in Rito Village as well, which would be awesome to experience. And yes, encourage more player-based immersion. But with this said, some players may not agree with it. And this is when something important has to be brought up about immersion in video games. One player's depiction of what they believe immersion should be can be completely different to a different player's perspective of their version of embracing immersion. And hence why, in this episode of Game Grumps, even though I am more on the side of Aaron, I completely understand where Danny's coming from with his points of view. In his points of view, these cutscenes that are showing off the lay of the land and trying to depict how big the scape of the entire world is, is his form of immersion. He's not necessarily immersed in the small part of the world, he's immersed in the bigger picture. Whilst Aaron wants to be focused on the goal at hand, first, then the world as an entirety, giving his immersive experience a completely different scape to Danny's. Hence why the dynamic really works, and hence why I'm loving this playthrough of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Game Grump channel. So in the end of the day, when it comes to immersion, it is all down to you as a player, and whether you do prefer the idea of embracing and having immersive experience driven by you, or whether you would prefer an experience where the game shows you something out on a grand scale and then you're able to embrace it. So as I close this video, I want to leave you guys 
with this. When you're playing a game like The Legend of Zelda or Skyrim or an RPG in general, try and mark down what happens when you're given a moment involving a cutscene where it shows you something that you already necessarily know. Does that get you angry? Does that motivate you to then keep playing? Or does that break your immersion and you're left thinking, oh come on! I'm generally curious and if you do try that out for yourself, be sure to leave a comment below with your thoughts. And in general, why don't you just leave a comment saying if you enjoyed or didn't necessarily enjoy this video, whether you agree or disagree with my thoughts on the matter, and all that fun stuff. I'm the Expert, and this has been a very interesting video to actually put together. I would like to give a big shout out to the Game Grumps guys. No, I'm not endorsed by them. No, I'm not supported by them. Heck, they probably don't even know I exist. But hell, without them making this series, I wouldn't have been inspired to actually make this video as a response to what they said in that one. And if you haven't seen that episode in particular, I have a link to it in the description below, as well as the playlist of their entire Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild run so far, because I think it's absolutely hilarious, and it also brings up some very interesting commentary that I think you guys will enjoy. So until next time, have an amazing day, and if you want to talk more about RPGs, you can hit me up on my social media down below. I'm the Exploder, stay explosive, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. See ya!